Hey everyone, welcome to the Coffee Run Live, episode 232, with me, Nicola Morass. So excited to have you here. What I wanted to chat with you all about today is this thinking or this thought that may have occurred to you or might be rolling around in your head at various different times, and that is the thought of there's got to be a better way. Now, I have had these thoughts in the past a lot, actually. So the thing that I think is really interesting about it is what is it that you're having these thoughts around? For me, it was around making sales. Now, one of the ways that I built my business and built it really fast, starting back in 2010, although that bit wasn't fast, that bit was really slow, was by making sales calls. And so what that would look like is people would opt in for something and then on the, the thank you page, it would say, hey, would you like to have a free consultation with me? We'll chat about your marketing, what your plan looks like, and I'll let you know the next steps. And if we want to work together, we will. And if not, we won't. And so they would give me their information and I was getting on average maybe 20 to 25% of people who would then give me their information and I would give them a call and talk about all their stuff. Now, this was a really, it was a really great way to cut my teeth in this thing called business. It was a really great way to learn sales. It was a really amazing way to learn so much about the people who were watching, the people who were following, the people who then became clients of mine, and the people who didn't actually became become clients of mine. It was really insightful. Because I guess like when you're when you're spending and and this is where the point of today's life comes in. I was spending literally all day every day on the phone making phone calls. Like at, this is back like in heyday times, right? Where things were just freaking flying, and I would be getting. I remember having a pile of phone numbers like literally that high to to go through and call, and I just became really swamped and overwhelmed with the sheer volume of people to ring. Um, to the point where I was, I was acting almost like my own, my very own call center. I would be dialing, dialing between 60 and 80 people a day. I would be having maybe four or five conversations with people every day and making anywhere from one to three sales a day, uh, depending on the campaign of the time and, and, and how, and the day and how it was panning out. And I kept that up for a really freaking long time and it was it was fun, it was enjoyable, there were a lot of amazing elements in it, but it was also really freaking exhausting. You know, like I would be literally sitting at my desk, headphones in my phone, and have the pile of paper in front of me, and I would just be making notes, turn it over, like making notes, turn it over, and I would do that all day, every day. And I was, like, it was a little bit, um, you know, it was kind of like a double-edged sword, right? In this sense that I was making money. I was making great freaking money. I was talking to the, the most amazing people and some not so amazing people because, you know, you can't market your way out of stupid. Yeah, I did say that. Um, there were some people who were just like, they just wouldn't read the thing and they maybe they didn't even have a business or whatever. So they just didn't understand what it was that they were putting their information in for. So it was really kind of curious. But what I was, um, you know, really starting to kind of go around in my head was like, there's got to be a better freaking way of doing this. There has to be a better way of doing this. And so I hired some salespeople and that was equally interesting. Um, I actually hired my father and I hired some external people and my dad was really great and really, really amazing still required managing, which I found an interesting type of, because he's a human, right? So like an interesting kind of dynamic there. Um, and like they'd be on the phones, like they, they, my salespeople, they'd be on the phones all day, every day. And that's really, that can be quite burning out or it, it's a process that, that can be really exhausting, right? I guess let's just say it like that. And so roll around and I, and I did this for years and years and years. And then we rolled around to... 2015, and I remember being part of a mastermind group, and we were chatting about the things that were really great in our businesses, you know, how much money we were making, how many people we were helping, 
uh, the, the things that we were doing and the things that we love to do and, and all of this type of thing. And I remember saying to, to one of the gentlemen, it's like, there's got to be a better freaking way because all I'm doing is constantly, you know, doing all of the marketing side of things. I'm managing other people because I had admin staff. I had a, like the, my personal assistant. I had the sales people. I had like all of these, there were just so many things going on. And I kind of, I just, I was like, there's just got to be a better way of doing this. And I think like this question of there's got to be, or this statement or this pondering of there's got to be a better way is a really important one because it can be a precursor to burnout. It can be a precursor or a sign that you're on that fast track to becoming really it's like disenfranchised with what it is that you're doing, disconnected with what you're doing. And it can lead you to actually resenting this big, beautiful thing that you're building and that you're creating. Hey, Jeanette. Hey, Joe. The and and it's just really it can be really quite demoralizing actually because you know we're we're so passionate about our businesses. We're so excited about the work that we get to do. And I was just like, there's got to be a better freaking way of being able to reach people, grow people, connect with people, make sales with people, help them, help them get results. And so chatting with this gentleman, I, I was like you know, there's, there's got to be some other way of being able to do this. And like, how are you doing it? And this actual guy was doing, running webinars and I was still running webinars, like before what I was doing, what I was doing, but I was kind of, my lead generation strategy was a little bit different. The way of getting people, so I'd get the webinar people and then I would have, there was like two ways of getting on the phone. One way was via a thank you page and accessing a bonus strategy session which is a sales call for those of you that, you know, just we're going to call it like it is. And the other way was by being on a webinar and then asking for a phone call, like to apply for a program and something like, or something like that. If it wasn't something like that, it was that. So you're on a webinar, we're talking about a program. I'd say like, if this is something that you're interested in, go pop your information in and we'll hop on the phone. So I would get applications off the back of a webinar and I'd also have applications that would come through in the lead generation process. And so he was suggesting that I should, or that I could stop bringing people in on the phone from that, from the landing page side of things and just focus on the webinars. And he, he taught me a, a bit of a different sort of process, or it wasn't really a different one, but almost like this hybrid kind of process that was freaking amazing because the other thing that happened off the back of these webinar calls because I would sometimes I'd go for an hour and a half. One of my zones of genius is being able to have all of the words for all of the things and you know really be able to laser in and help you guys in, in a personalized kind of fashion. But I would just I would enjoy talking with these people that would be on the phone for an hour and a half. And if we look at it with the volume of applications that I was that I was getting, an hour and a half is a really long time to determine sorry. To, to actually get to the close and have people say, yes, I'd like to buy your stuff or no, thank you, I'm, I'm good, I'm going to leave it. And whilst the process, while I really thoroughly enjoyed the process, it was just taking far too much time. So again, it was like, oh my God, there's got to be a better way. But I kept doing that for a really long time. And part of the reason, I think, that I kept doing it for so long and kept... Like I'd have this little thing, like this little, it's like almost like that little devil on your shoulder, right? Where it's like, there's got to be a better way, Nicola. There's got to be a better way, Nicola. And I couldn't see it. And I didn't know anyone who was doing things in different ways that would make things work. And so I guess like for me, it was like, all right, well, I'm going to go and try this and then we'll see what happens. And then it got to the start of last year. I'm like, you know what? I am really tired of doing things again in the way that things have been, the way that I was doing it. And, and that little thing was like, there's got to be a better way, Nicola. And I was just like, man, okay. But I got really scared. It's really interesting, the fear of like letting go of something that is seemingly working to go and try something that we have no evidence yet that may or may not work, Right. I'm glad this is resonating with you, Jeanette, because it's just, 
you know, it's kind of like going, all right, this is working, it's working, it's working, and then you're gonna go and like take this leap off the thing and go, okay, let's go try this thing that might not freaking work. So what I'd suggest that you do is like, if you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, there has gotta be a better way of doing this, there has gotta be a better way of doing this, there usually is, right? Hey Jones, hey Phil, there usually is a better way of doing things. Now, the, the trick here is that our brains are freaking clever. And if you subscribe to quantum physics and, and the theories around that, and I do, I do believe that our thoughts become things and that we can create our own reality. I was going to say that we can, to a degree, create our own reality, which means that we can create our own reality. And so for me... What if we, if I get that inkling, if there's got to be a better way these days, I'm like, all right, well, let's sit down and try and map out, work out, strategize, theorize, brainstorm, journal, and work out what the better way might be. Because usually that, that question is the first clue or like the first kind of like sledgehammer across the head clue that things really do need to change. Trust that being your intuitive hit but not from a place of fear. And I talked a lot about fear yesterday. And I really do believe that if we're able to utilize our brains, utilize the technology that we've got available to us by, by way of you know, energy as well as you know, technology, technology through computers and everything else, that we will be able to find the better way. And that might look like a new mentor coming into the picture. It might look like a new idea coming in. It might look like uh, a source of inspiration. It might just be like this divine download where you're like, bang, okay, like why don't, like of course, this is so freaking obvious. And usually the better way is really obvious, but we often don't choose to go and leap and follow that and chase it down and then work that process because we like the certainty of the thing that's not really working for us even if it appears to be working, right? Makes sense? A little bit, it's a little bit of a curly one, this one today. So that's really the main thing that I wanted to talk to you about is if you're thinking that there's got to be a better way, there usually is. So if you're having that idea, if you're having that thought, sit down, do some work around it and work out what that next better way is for you because that's usually the big opening of the floodgates that you're going to be able to then go and do more of what it is that, that you're here to do, for you to work in your zone of genius, for you to work in your area where you just can, you know, it, it doesn't even feel like work doing what it is that you do. All right. So there you go. Short, sharp and shiny today. There's got to be a better way. There probably is. And oh, there's got to be another way. Maybe not even a better way, but there's got to be another way of doing this that serves me and serves my clients, my prospects better. Um, think about that. Let me know what comes up. All right. We do start our 30-day challenge on Monday, and I'm super excited. We've just had another lady confirm today. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got a few spaces left if you want to get in on that and get some really amazing ass kicking, if I do say so myself. But also we're doing a 30-day live stream challenge in there as well, which is where you are going to really practice getting your message out there on video. So it's a bit of a, it's almost like a bit of a content boot camp, I suppose, in the mix of everything else as well, by which I mean that you're going to know what to say, how to say it, you're going to commit to when you're going to do it. If you're not quite confident enough yet to go and do it out on your business page, you'll do it in the secret group so that you can really just kind of like get your feet under you and be able to practice saying the stuff that you feel like you really need to say and share without the fear or the worry of what the general public is going to see uh, before you feel really confident. So if you need to get in on that, let me know, message me and I'll send you a bit more information. Otherwise, get out there, go help some people, be visible and remember the world is freaking ready for your brand of awesomeness. All right, everybody, happy Thursday.